You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 27. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Well, hello there, Amy Porterfield here, and thanks for tuning in to yet another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. Now, today we are talking about video creation and editing. Now, when I said that, I know a few of you instantly felt a little anxious because video is not usually at the top of anyone's favorite things to do list for your business. Well, at least it's not at the top of mine. I've been creating videos ever since I started my online business, but it's always been a tough thing for me. I don't particularly like to see myself on video. And let's face it, video is actually a lot of work. From the creation side of it and the editing side, it's not like you can do this in five minutes and get it up and running. Well, that's exactly why I invited my friend Caleb Wojcik to the show. He's promised me that he's going to give us some tips to make it all so much easier. Now, if you don't yet know Caleb, he has a pretty interesting background and I'm going to let him tell you all about it. But what I will say is that he's one of the funniest guys that I know. Now, when you look at Caleb, he doesn't seem like he's going to be a total crack up, but let me tell you, the guy is kind of hysterical. So I'm actually recording this intro after we recorded the interview you're going to hear. So I didn't get the opportunity to tease him about this during our interview, but I really wish I did. So let me let you in on a little secret. Caleb is a closet karaoke rock star. Yes, it's true. So recently I spoke at the Tropical Think Tank event in the Philippines with Caleb. And on one late night, we ended up at a karaoke bar, which are kind of a big deal in the Philippines. I mean, they go all out. So what I did not expect was to see Caleb get up there and know every word to songs like Gold Digger. And what was the other one? Oh, Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake. He actually knew every word without having to look at the screen and he was good. So I was very, very impressed. So if you ever see Caleb around, you must ask him to show you some of his karaoke skills. He's probably going to kill me for divulging this info, but I really couldn't resist. So I won't make you wait any longer. Let's jump into my interview with one of my very favorite video marketing experts and karaoke rock star, Caleb Wojcik. So Caleb, thanks so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Amy. So in the intro, I talked about how you're pretty much a smarty pants. You're kind of a big shot. So (laughs) I went over a little of that in the intro, but I want you to tell people how long ago did you start working with video? So a little over two years ago, I started working with Corbett Barr, who founded Think Traffic, and I now work with at Fizzle.co. And as soon as I started working with him, he had a bunch of videos that I needed to edit. And I'd done a little bit of filmmaking in college, maybe made one or two videos when I was in high school, but nothing really major. So I had to learn how to edit video, eventually how to shoot video, record webinars we were doing, edit side-by-side Skype interviews. Then we got more into having better camera equipment, recording in-person video interviews and courses for things we were teaching online. So it was two and a half years ago is when I kind of started getting into it. So did you start with, when you said you were starting in the beginning, did you start with like screen recordings or kind of what did that look like? Yeah, they were just straight out of screen flow. They're screen recordings with, you know, us talking over them. They were then graduated to Skype interviews. We recorded on webcams. And then from there, they just went up into, you know, one camera talking into it kind of thing. And then eventually now we do multiple DSLRs recording either live events we do video interviews we do, courses we do for Fizzle. Gotcha. So you've kind of done them all. Do you think that when people are just starting out with video, because I think a lot of people listening maybe do a little bit of video or they want to do video and they're just starting out, do you always suggest to start out with, let's say, the screen recordings? Yeah, if you're afraid of being like in front of the camera and being, you know, having to talk to nothing, like having to talk to someone that's not there, Yeah, it can be a little bit intimidating. So if you're already podcasting or even if you're not podcasting, just record your screen, talk over it, show what you're doing. A few things you can do. You can do a PowerPoint or a keynote presentation and just pretend like you're doing a public speaking event and talk through the slides. You can also record your screen while you're showing a piece of software 
or tutorial on what to do on the web or something along those lines. And that's a great way to start. And then from there, you can progress to recording your webcam at the same exact time. You can put it down in the lower right or something so they can see there's an actual person there. I think that's a really good progression. I know when I first started doing video, I definitely did a lot of the screen recording. And I also think the screen recording gets you really comfortable with teaching new content, Mm -hmm. which is always good. And then also just getting used to hearing your voice. I mean, I am so critical. Caleb knows this because I have to tell you guys, we are actually in my office, my home office right now. Caleb and I live really close to each other. He came over to help me as a big favor, film a video. And then we decided to do the podcast. I'm totally uncomfortable because I have to look at him (laughs) in the face right now. And it is the oddest thing. We had to start over in the beginning because I looked at him and I got all confused. So this is a little bit of a different podcast, but it's a lot of fun because it's actually in person, which is fun. But I totally got off track. What I was going to say was I'm so critical when I see myself in video. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily love what I see and I find all the flaws. And in the beginning, I just had to get comfortable hearing my voice on video. So I think the screen recording is a great way to kind of progress into video. So I'm glad you said that because you don't usually hear that from people that shoot video a lot. Yeah. And you don't have to start with everything. You don't have to hire someone to make your first videos. Just record yourself talking into your laptop or into your phone. Um, If you do talk into your phone, have something that's stabilizing it other than your arm because then you'll have like the selfie shot with like <laughs> half of your arm in the in the video. So you don't really want that, but you know, just get started with something simple, then progress and get used to your voice, get used to delivering into an inanimate object instead of talking to someone. It takes a lot of practice. It does. And that's why I really encourage anyone who's thinking of doing it or wants to do it more. You really just have to force yourself into it. You know, however you want to make videos, you just got to keep doing it. I've been doing this for years and years now. And when I look at those first videos, I cringe, but I'm also glad I got started years ago. So it just gets easier as you go, just like everything. Yeah. I always encourage people to go look at the first videos on people's YouTube channels because they're usually pretty bad. Yeah. Let's not look at mine. Why did you have to say that? (laughs) Okay. Okay. Look at everyone's but Amy's. Exactly. I'm going to delete all those quickly. (laughs) So another thing when it comes to video is that video takes a lot of time, or at least this might be my myth. You know, I have a myth around it. So you've got to have some tips for making video making and the editing more just quicker, right? Yeah. And that's true. I ran a survey recently to my audience and it was 60% of people said the reason why they're not making more videos is time. Yes, I totally agree. So there are a few things you can do. One of them is you can outsource it. That's obviously the more expensive option, but you can outsource just parts of it. You can outsource just someone to come and help you shoot it. So that speeds it up a little bit. You could have someone just do all the editing, which I've had someone do editing for me sometimes too. And that can be cheaper because that person doesn't need to be able to afford all the equipment and have to come over to your house and take time. You can just upload the files especially if they're overseas, that can be a little cheaper too. But there are a few things I recommend. The first one is when you're shooting it, give yourself notes for when you're editing it later. So if you mess up, say, you know what, don't use that part, or I hate that part, or you know, talk to yourself in the future, talk to your editing self and say, I really like the third take, but maybe, t- maybe use the fourth take. But a little audio trick that you can use is I make a sound after I make a mistake on a video. What and kind of sound? So I click three times with my, I snap. So I go. Okay. And then I can see it when I'm editing. I see three little spikes in the audio waveform. And I know whatever's right before that is junk. Don't watch it. You're just going to be embarrassed watching yourself mess up. Perfect. So I go through editing wise and I say, oh, there's three spikes. That's junk. I, oh, three spikes, three spikes, three spikes. Sometimes it's a rough day and you don't get through the take. So if you do that, then that saves a bunch of time in editing. You don't have to watch the whole thing that you recorded. That's a great point. So just making those spikes in the audio Mm -hmm. so you can jump to it. Mm -hmm. And then when you're actually editing, you can save time by editing backwards. Okay. I never understood this. So you need to talk about this. Okay. So typically when you're recording video and like the one we shot here today, Your last take is the is the best one, typically. Okay, perfect. So you're like, oh, I got it. And then you move on. And so if you know that that last take is the best one, if you edit backwards, you're only watching the last takes and you can delete everything before that. 
Okay. Now I don't sense? know why it didn't make sense the first time I heard it. That <laughs> makes perfect sense. That is a really good idea because in my early years, and I'm, this is not too long ago, I recorded and edited all my videos and I used, so I use ScreenFlow a lot of the time mm-hmm. and I know we're going to talk equipment a little later, but I would literally watch every single take and then you get frustrated because you just don't want to see all those bad takes right. anyway. Right. Okay. So starting from the end, that makes sense. Okay. Now mm-hmm. I get it. And then if you really have no time, don't script it because scripting, it takes time in the first place to write it all out. Then if you're scripting it and you don't have a teleprompter, you're trying to nail it exactly. You're trying to say 95% of the words correctly before you're going to be happy with it. And so if you don't have time, don't script it at all because then you just have to ad lib. And if it's recording and you just have to keep talking, yeah, you might mess up, but you can just keep going. So this past weekend or two weekends ago or something, I just set up all my camera equipment. I was like, this weekend I'm going to record. I had like 15 videos to record and you just hit record and you just start talking and you just go. And yeah, there are a couple times in the videos that I had to edit out, but for the most part, and I was doing like tutorials on how to do something on screen. So I was talking to a camera and doing screen fill at the same time and cutting back and forth. But I could have scripted all those out, but it would have taken me four or five times as long. For sure. You make such a great point. I never thought about this, but I script all my stuff. And not only does it take me a long time, but you're right. When I'm recording it, I'm trying to nail exactly Mm -hmm. what's in that script. Mm -hmm. And that is why I have so many cuts. So that is a great point. Now, I could never, just because my personality, I could never go into a photo or a video shoot without anything, Mm -hmm. but... I might want to change that up a bit and just do bullets. Mm -hmm. I've got to have something in front of me just because that's how I am. And that might be how you are. If you're listening, you just need some notes. But Caleb makes a great point. If you do bullets versus a full script, then you're not trying to nail every word of it. Right. And the same thing if you record solo podcast episodes or something, you you could write out the whole thing, but it might not sound natural. But if you do bullet points, then you're going to have to elaborate. You're going to throw in jokes that you think of randomly. Yes. So it just is going to come off a little bit more natural. And when you do mess up, I, I left most of those in there in these tutorials that I'm talking about. Cause it's funny, I'm trying to remember something and I'm kind of searching for it, but it shows that you're, you're human a little bit instead of just a robot talking through talking points the whole time. I totally agree with that. And this is something that I've had to get used to. Anybody who's followed my podcast from the beginning, you know that my first few, I think it was every single word was scripted. And I got a lot of feedback that you sound way too polished and people didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard for me to leave in those hiccups and those mistakes. But I always really like it when I listen to Pat Flynn or anything mm-hmm. like that. And they've left in the little hiccups because it's just so natural. Yeah. And Pat's to the point now where he can read something word for word and you would never know. Okay. Because I've I shot videos with him where it's teleprompter, but people have no yeah. idea. See, that's something to aspire to because then everything gets easier. Mm-hmm. If you're good on a teleprompter, definitely there's a lot of different options for teleprompters, but you were telling me Pat uses one where he, it's a piece of glass over or tell me about it. Okay. I'm not even going to try. So he uses one called an I can teleprompter. It's I K A N. And what it is, is you just take a full size iPad or an iPad mini and you clip it in. And then there's a piece of glass that you put your camera behind and it's angled at a 45 degree angle and it reflects up the words from the iPad. So buying a standalone teleprompter could be pretty expensive. Yeah. But if you have an iPad or, I mean, you could put an Android tablet there as well. And then you just put that on top of a tripod. You attach your camera to that thing. And they have cheap ones for, I mean, $150, $200. The iCans are better quality and they're closer to, I think, $500 or $600. But they're so so worth worth it. it. Yeah. All the time you would save shooting and editing, it can... It can save a lot of time. Yeah, for sure. That's something that I think that's going to be my next investment is a teleprompter. I have, I I was telling Caleb, I used a teleprompter early on when I was making videos for another company and I look like I had crazy eyes because (laughs) the teleprompter was somehow situated not directly inside the camera. He was saying that the, you literally, the camera's coming through the the glass. Because you just stare right into the camera lens and your words are right there. Okay, perfect. That's what I need. So I'm going to, I'm going to give that a shot for sure, but that would save so much much time. So anything that will work for you in terms of if you should script or not script, you know, bullets or not bullets or um, a teleprompter, whatever might work, I say go for it because mm-hmm. video is so important. And we really didn't talk about this in the beginning, but 
you would agree, obviously, you're a video guy, yeah. that video makes a huge difference in just your marketing overall, right? Right. And I think there's different uses for all three kinds. Let's, but, let's talk about yeah. that. So written, I think, is really good for long forward content, teaching, uh, inspirational type things, and you know, obviously books and blog posts and things like that. Audio is great because instead of getting one to two to maybe three minutes of someone's time in a day, they're getting 30 to 60 minutes, usually while they're doing something else, they're yeah. driving, they're walking, but they think about that out of someone's full day, they get 30 to 60 minutes. That's you talking directly to them. You can't really get that in video or in written content unless they're sitting down to read a book or they're watching like a film or something. Yeah. So audio is really, really strong. Video is somewhere in between the two where you're going to get, you know, five to 10 minutes of people's time unless they're taking a video course where there's a ton of videos, but it has to be a little bit more compact than, than audio because podcasts, we can just have a conversation, go free form, go through bullet points and stuff. But someone has their full attention on you yeah. when you're doing video as opposed to they're doing dishes or walking their dog. Yeah, definitely. So would you suggest that you want to keep them short and sweet or do you have an opinion about that? I think there is a sweet spot somewhere between three to five minutes for talking head type videos where you're trying to teach one to three things and you don't want to elaborate too much and it gives you enough time for some build up to what you're talking about. Then you can explain it and then have a conclusion and some sort of call to action and three to five minutes. That's reasonable. There's nothing wrong with two hour video interviews, if they're interesting, if they're shot well. If you're doing side by side Skype video interviews, most people will just listen to the audio and go to another tab or something. Right. So if you're going to do really long video interviews, they should be in person, in my opinion. Okay. And so that's what we do at Fizzle. We invite the person over, we have multiple cameras, and we do really high quality. And we also offer the audio if people want that. But there's just that personality that goes another step when you can see them, you see the mannerisms, you see how they interact and laugh and when Chase makes funny faces at them and stuff. So, <laughs> Which is always fun. Yeah. So, okay, so that brings me to another question and that is, do you have a strong opinion based on you being an expert in video of the, I would say, more homemade videos versus the really professional videos. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when Caleb came over here today, we had some lighting going on. You have a great camera. Mm -hmm. We had um, the right mic and all that good stuff. A lot of people listening do not have the budget for that, nor right. are they at a place to be doing that. So is it okay to have these more, you know, do it yourself type videos? Absolutely. Okay. And I have a perfect example of this. I did uh, an episode on Pat's podcast. And in the comments, we said, post your videos, Pat and I will give you feedback. And even before I could get in there and give feedback, Pat's audience was wow. responding to everybody. <laughs> but someone just had this video where they're a mommy blogger and their thing is couponing and saving money at grocery stores and things like that. And what she does is she lays out all of her groceries on the counter, says how much it is, and she just holds up her phone and she points it at like her notebook that she wrote down what she was going to buy and then shows the coupons. And so it's really? very DIY. And I mean, this thing had 10,000 views in like two days or something. Because her audience is so big and they the sale is now. They need to know what they can buy. And it was like this huge table full of stuff for like 20 bucks. So wow. she, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> but it was very DIY. And I was like, I responded to her and I said, you know, you could have made this a lot more complicated, but you didn't really need to. You know your audience. They just wanted to get the information. And literally, instead of like words coming on the screen, she was holding her phone and it was just at a piece of paper. So it depends on your audience, obviously, yeah. and how polished it should be. And if you're charging a lot of money for something, yeah, maybe you should pay to have it professionally produced. But generally, you should just start with whatever you have and work your way up. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think that knowing your audience and knowing what they're going to respond to is so important because there's a lot of niches out there that most people aren't even using video. So mm -hmm. if you just throw on a video camera and start talking, you're going to be standing out way different than all your competition. Right. So you're lucky if you're in a niche right now that people aren't really using video, jump on it right away. Mm -hmm. I feel that my business really started to take off when I just kind of bit the bullet and started getting in front of the camera more. It's definitely not something I love, right. but I 
I know it makes a huge difference. And now I do more professional videos. I have someone come over and I pay him for actually shooting the video and editing, Mm -hmm. but I didn't do that in the beginning. And so I think wherever you are, I love that you said that, just start, just start doing it wherever you are. Now, a lot of people that are say, okay, Amy, I'm going to start, I'm going to do it. Yeah. They get hung up on hosting and equipment. Okay. Two questions that come up a lot. So okay. let's break that down and give some really specifics if you have them. Sure. Okay. So, so hosting. Okay. Let's start with hosting. So YouTube is great if you want to build your audience, uh, give free videos away to people and have them uh, be able to subscribe. You can do links in them for call to actions. You can even now do links to go outside of YouTube. You used to just be able to link for people to subscribe to your channel or watch other videos and stuff. But now you can put a URL to whatever you want at the end of the Love video that. with the annotations and stuff like that. And I mean, YouTube's audience is huge. You're going to rank in Google search for a lot of things. So if you're trying to rank in SEO for something, make a video because the chances of you ranking for the video are going to be way higher than a, a single web page. Oh, good point. Okay. So YouTube is great for those types of things. I don't like using YouTube for things that people are going to pay for. I agree. Because you don't really have much control over YouTube and they can shut it down any time. So you really want to make sure that if, if you're going to have people paying you hundreds or thousands of dollars for videos, that it can't be turned off without like at least an email first, like at least a warning. Yeah. So there are two options that I recommend for that. The first is Wistia and they're specifically made for businesses and individuals hosting videos that can be completely customized how they want to do it. And they have amazing customer support. I've chatted with like the CEO and some of the people on their team before, and we love them at Fizzle. We run all of Fizzle completely on Wistia. Oh, do you? Okay. So it's like a pay per month kind of thing. Yeah. And so you pay per how many videos and bandwidth you use. So as your program grows and gets more popular, it's going to cost more, but as it's more popular, you're also getting paid more. So it'll, it'll scale equivalent to cool. how often people are using it. But the great thing about Wistia is their stats. So we can go into every video and we can see which one's being watched the most, which ones are being rewatched. Wow. So we can see which courses are the most popular. And without having to ask people, oh, what's the most popular course? Or which one did you like the most? We know. We can see specifically all of that. And you can see... Can you see if they start a video and don't finish? You can see Absolutely. that. Wow, that's great stuff. So when you click on an individual video, so like one lesson inside of a course, yeah. let's say, there is then a stream of all the people that have recently watched it, and you can see how far they all got. Oh, so you I can like see like that. most people got you know, 90 100%, but this person stopped at 20%. And then you can click on that IP address. And if you get fancy, you can tie it to your membership software and then put a person's name on that. Okay. Which is crazy because you could see like fancy yeah (laughs) but you could just go into the user or ip address and then see all the other videos they've watched and so it's specific to that too so you can get very very specific and you can label all of those people with those ip addresses and stuff i love that yeah you know um do you know jermaine griggs no you know that name he is a big shot with infusionsoft Mm -hmm. and i could be wrong but i swear i think he said one time because i've never used wistia but it's Mm -hmm. definitely something i'm interested in and i think he used infusionsoft and wistia together so that he knew if someone came to his site and they opted in so he got their email Mm -hmm. and they watched a video but only halfway he had a special email that went out to that person that said i know you only got through 50 percent like come on back and watch the video so there's some really cool things you can do when you know at what level they're watching your content. Yeah, and there's so many Wistia features that you should definitely check them out. But another one that I really like is called Turnstyle, where you can have a video where someone has to put in their email address to watch it, or maybe a minute, two minutes in, they have to put it in to keep watching. That's cool. So you can actually put on your blog, Yeah, and and you can have a teaser in the first minute, and like, this is what we're gonna talk about. And then it's like, enter your email to watch the rest of the video. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I've never done that before. Yeah. And people don't get annoyed like, what? You just started the video. I mean, it depends on how you do it and <laughs> yeah. how you approach it and everything. Yeah, I but. think you have to be smart with that first teaser video. But that is big because, you know, on this show, I talk about list building all the mm-hmm. time. So let's talk a little bit about using video for list building. So using Wistia and what's it called again? Turn turn style turn style yeah. okay so that's really cool the video starts then people have to opt in to get the full video mm-hmm. i love that 
What are some other ways that you can use video in order to either build your email list or just for your your marketing in general? Mm -hmm. Some ways that you've seen the best ways to use it. Yeah, so one way is actually the way you do it, which is for your audio podcast, you do a video on Facebook. Yes, so this is something that I really need to do more of. Or YouTube also. Yes, YouTube as well. So what I've done in the past and I've started to do a little bit, but I want to do more of is that I will make like a one minute video about my podcast. So if I was going to do it for this one, I'd say, hey guys, I've got Caleb on today. We're talking video and we're going to go over boom, boom, boom and kind of give the bullets real fast. And so just go ahead and click the link and you can start listening right away. And I take them to my show notes. Mm -hmm. um, So then they can either go to the show notes, get all the links or Mm -hmm. go to obviously download to iTunes. And we should have shot that earlier today. We should have. We had everything. (laughs) We already took down all the equipment. What were we thinking? That would have been so good. So that using video for podcasts, I love it. And here's the reason why. One, I use it all over Facebook. So that's just a great way. And if the shorter, the better, I think, Mm -hmm. especially for Facebook. And also, you know, not everybody is going to want to read a blog post or not everyone's going to want to listen to a podcast or not everyone's going to want to watch a video. So to me, if I do a big mixture of all three, I'm going to reach a larger audience. Right. And there's going to be people that like to consume content a certain way. Yep not another way. And so another thing that I've seen people do is they'll take audio clips from a podcast episode or something, make a three to five minute video that, you know, it just has their picture or whatever, but the words come on screen and say the quote and you hear the voice of it. And then, you know, there's a link to watch the whole episode. I love that. I think there's just some really fun ways to do it. What I really want to get across anybody that's just you know, struggling with video or wants to use it, but haven't, hasn't yet. There's really easy or shorter ways to use video. Whereas you don't have to be on screen for a long time. One minute, good enough. Yeah. Or, you know, doing the whole screen cast or whatever it might be, but Mm -hmm. there's just so many options. I think people get really caught up in the equipment. Oh yeah. We got to come back to the equipment. That's what we're talking about. Okay. So we talked about, uh, hosting, Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about some other equipment that you'd suggest. Okay, so we can go through the kind of the budget range. Cool. So, so starting out, obviously, your phone typically nowadays has a really good camera in it. Um, and it's usually a little better than your webcam. But recording on your phone and then you have to bring it on your computer, it can be a little bit harder. But if you're using something like ScreenFlow on Mac is a screen recording software where you can record your screen and your webcam at the same time. I use that all the time. Love it. Mm-hmm. And if you're on Windows, there's a program called Camtasia, uh, C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A. And that's basically the equivalent for Windows. Great. So you can record on your phone or your webcam. That's kind of built in, free. You already have it. Just start shooting something. To make those a little better, lighting, either sitting in front of a window if you don't have lights or having a light that you already own and placing it, you know, 45 degrees or directly in front of you kind of. Oh, this is good to know. I've never known where to put the light. So where to put the light. Yeah. Yeah. So 45 degrees or directly in front of you. Yeah. Somewhere between, you know, 30 to 45 degrees, because if it's straight on you, um, you're gonna, you might have a shadow from the camera and everything on you, but if it's to the side, just a little bit, you'll have a little bit of shadow on your face, but not too much. And, you'll be lit just from one side. And that's kind of a basic one light setup. Gotcha. So when we shot your video today, I had one light on one side of you and one on the other. And one of them was brighter than the other one. So you wouldn't have completely blown out, like no shadows on your face. It was kind of a little bit offset. And you also had windows to one side of your room, which which was naturally just bringing light in from another side. Yeah, I love the natural light. When it works, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so lighting, super important. Yeah, and even if you don't have anything, move your laptop and position it in front of a window so you're not completely dark. Because at least how my office is set up, my desk faces a wall. Yeah. And my window is like back to the left. So if I didn't purposely move stuff around or put a light in front of me, it's going to look super dark. Gotcha. And then... You, got, you have to think about sound, too. So on an iPhone or an Android or something, there's a microphone called the Rode Smart Lav, okay. L-A-V. And, and we're going to put all of this in um, in the show notes as yeah. well as you have equipment guide, right? Yeah, I'll have an equipment guide for people to check out, too. Cool. So we'll put that a download to that in the show notes, but mm-hmm. keep going. And so this Smart Lav, it plugs right into your headphone jack, but 
then you can clip it to your shirt and you can talk directly into it and it's going to get way better sound, especially because if you're talking into a phone, it's going to be a few feet away from you and the microphone's not going to be very close. To me, the number one thing of audio and video is the sound. Mm-hmm. When the sounds, even when it's a little dark, but the sound is good, I'll mm-hmm. keep watching. But if the sound's bad, I'm out. Yeah, So exactly. that's really important. Okay, so that's the mic for the iPhone? For Yeah, for iPhones, for Android, oh, cool. stuff like that. And okay. It's around $60 and you can just record directly into when you're recording a video. Or that's even not bad if you're just doing podcasting on the go. For a webcam, the series of microphones that I would use if you're doing screen recordings and stuff are just the same that you would use for podcasting. So any of the ones by Blue. So there's the Snowflake, there's the Snowball, there's the Yeti. They're all like winter themed, (laughs) but you you go up in price and in quality as you as you get higher. And then if you go into actually podcasting microphones like the high LPR 40s we're using, I mean, you're going to spend a few hundred dollars, but the Yeti is my favorite. I have one over there in the corner and the Yeti is what I use for all of my trainings, probably mm-hmm. the first three years of business. So mm-hmm. I love the Yeti. Not mm-hmm. too expensive. Yeah. And that one's good if you are actually on screen too, if you're on a webcam. Oh yeah. Because you don't want a big podcasting microphone blocking uh, half of your face and stuff. Yes. So you can put it off to the side and you will get some room echo, but I mean, it's, it's pretty decent sounding. It's better than having the microphone in your computer recording for sure and picking up the fan that picks up after a while and so you want to have some sort of external microphone for webcams or phones perfect okay and then going up from those i mean you really need either a dedicated video camera or a dslr which is a photography camera but it also now all almost all of them record really good video and so those i recommend to go with something in the Canon line, that's just what I use. You could use an Icon too, though. Okay, cool. I have Canon Rebel. Would that be a DSLR? Are those yeah. the letters? Okay. Yeah, so it basically just means that it has a detachable lens. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to get one really good fixed focal length lens. So instead of a zoom lens where you can go super wide, you can zoom in really far, you want just one fixed length lens. Okay. And the reason you do this is because the glass in those is higher quality because it's specifically for that focal length. And then you can shoot at a lower aperture. So when you want that blurred background that you see in a lot of professional videos, it's because the aperture is really low. And that's a technical thing, but when you have a fixed focal length lens, they're better at doing that type of thing. Gotcha. Okay. And one thought that just came to mind is when I was first starting out doing video and I really didn't have a lot of products or programs to sell at the time when I first started out my first year, I had a lot of clients and I was doing their social media. So at that point, it made sense to make up my own videos and do Mm -hmm. it on my, Mm -hmm. my own computer and webcam and all that good stuff. Like webcam was definitely the first videos I ever made. But what happened was I started to create online programs and my revenue started to go up. Mm -hmm. And as that happened, not only did I have more money to spend on equipment, but I could see how my videos could turn into profits. Mm -hmm. So using videos for lead generation Mm -hmm. is always a good idea or using videos to talk about my programs and then send people to a sales page. Mm -hmm. So I say this because as you get going, when you start to see how your videos can actually make money for you, that's when maybe you want to step things up a little bit. But in the beginning, when you don't really have a lot of programs or services to sell yet, but you want to get out there and you want to get that exposure, I'm thinking, you know, do it yourself videos is a great idea. Mm -hmm. So just kind of thinking about how it all comes together. Mm -hmm. So you can go up in price. The entry levels are right now. I mean, obviously, if you're listening to this a year or two from now, it's all going to (laughs) change. But right now, the Canon T5i is around six or seven hundred dollars, I think. Okay. Buy just the body and then get a 50 millimeter lens. And They can go up in price. There's three different versions, but there's 1.8, 1.4, and 1.2. And as you go to 1.2, I mean, you're going to spend over $1,000. But there's a 1.8 for about 130 bucks, and a 1.2 for about 400, or 1.4 for about 400 bucks. If you get that set up for under $1,000, you have a good camera, a good lens, and your video is going to look really good. Fantastic. Now, if you invest in a camera like that, mm-hmm. can you film yourself, or should you have someone behind the camera? Yes, you can. You can film yourself. And specifically the T5i and the 70D, which is the next step up, 
have the screen that swivels out and faces you, which oh, is that's right. super, super helpful when you're filming yourself. Yeah, so you can see yourself and what you look like. And also, I think there's like a remote that comes with my Rebel. So that mm-hmm. was kind of cool. And then talk tripods then. Yeah, so you, you'd really just need a basic tripod. You could just run to Best Buy or photography store cool. and you don't need anything fancy. You just need to be sitting still and to be able to adjust it a little bit easily. You don't need a fancy tripod unless you're going to be panning and moving it around and showing a bunch of different stuff. You just need one to to have it locked down. And Good. then I always record sound separately too. So I have a digital audio recorder, um, you know, the Tascam, that's T-A-S-K or C-A-M, or there's Zoom H4Ns, things like that that you can then buy a lavalier microphone to plug into and have the sound recorded separately and then you sync it later. Okay, whoa, that sounds technical. So I am not a techie girl. So yeah. you're telling me, so if I did that, how do I sync them together? What, what, what's into that? You're, you're making me super nervous. <laughs> so th- there's a program that I use called Plural Eyes. So okay. that's two words, plural as in multiple and eyes as in the eyes in your head. That's a program I use that syncs it all up for me. But if you're using something like iMovie or Final Cut Pro 10 or Adobe Premiere, you can sync footage together that way too. Okay, perfect. You can also do it manually if you're in ScreenFlow. You just, you know, you you do oh, yeah. the, the clapper thing that, that you see in movies. That's yep. so you can sync up the video and audio and you just find where that spike is and line them up and then you can mute the audio that came from your camera and then you just have good audio left. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense because I know how you can put them together mm-hmm. in ScreenFlow, mm-hmm. which, okay, great. So we're talking gear and equipment and all that stuff. And like I said, Caleb has created a gear guide that you can download. And basically he has it set out in, you know, low budgets or really small budgets to big budgets, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, you can get that at DIYvideoguy.com slash gear. Perfect. And right there is, I have the whole gear guide, everything from budget. So you have a couple hundred bucks to you have, you have a couple thousand dollars and you want to do something for a big launch that you know you're going to get the money back from. Great. So I'll link to it, but tell them again where you can get that. DIYvideoguy.com slash gear. So you set that up perfectly for me because speaking of DIY, mm-hmm. you have a brand new program. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that because I think a lot of people listening, this is going to be extremely valuable. Yeah. So I put together a guide basically of all the questions that I get from my friends, really, because I started doing freelancing video, um, video within fizzle and things like that. And so all all my online business friends, they all want to start shooting videos of themselves and they can't really afford for people to do it. Yeah. So I did a talk at New Media Expo when you were there, too. And I was like, wow, this room is packed. A lot of people want to do this thing. I need to I need to put this guide out there. So it's called DIY Video Guide. And you can go to DIYvideoguide.com. But it's a book as well as a bunch of video tutorials on a lot of this stuff that I'm talking about. I was going to say, you call it a guide, but it's really an online training program because you have all these videos. Mm-hmm. It was cool because you also did some interviews with people and kind of talked about their progression. I know mm-hmm. this because I, I did one, yeah. but you have other people as well. And then it's a book in terms of like an ebook. Yeah. So so there's a PDF that has, you know, five sections in it, everything from shooting to having good sound to editing to um, how to like manage all the files that you end up getting on your computer. All that kind of stuff is is in the book. But then there's 15 tutorials on, you know, how to use ScreenFlow and Final Cut Pro and nice. Premiere and stuff. So I do introductions to those things like recording Skype interviews and how to edit those together. So you can do the side by side interview. Yeah, you and all use side by side or you can I actually talk through how to record it on DSLRs on each end. Yeah. So that it's really high quality. Nice. But you have to have both people record it and then you have to sync it all. So I go into that in some of these tutorials and get a little bit more advanced. But then, yeah, there's interviews with people like you and Pat Flynn and stuff about how you got started not being on the screen at all. Yeah. But your YouTube channel was still growing at that point, just mm-hmm. doing screen recordings and talking over them. Yeah, definitely. Pat so, said he had like 50 to 100 videos he never put out. Like No fi- Yeah, way. finished videos that he never put we out. We need to get our hands on those and check Break them out. Break into his place and yes, take some Yes, exactly. Yeah. That would be some good stuff. Well, Caleb, I cannot thank you enough for being here. I think this is such an important topic. It's a really big piece of my business, making mm-hmm. videos. 
And I know it can be a big challenge, but it doesn't have to be. So I think you've really made it easier for us and you have all these great resources. So thanks so much. Yeah, thank you very much, Amy, for having me. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. So there you have it. I hope this interview with Caleb has got you feeling a bit inspired to take your video marketing up a notch. It could really make a big impact in your business. Now, don't forget to check out the show notes because all the links we talked about here can be found at amyporterfield.com forward slash 27, just the number 27. And remember, if you use the coupon code made easy, you get 10% off any of Caleb's video training packages. Good stuff, right? So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my podcast. Podcasting is one of my favorite projects I do for my business, and it means the world to me that you support me and you listen. So thanks for being here. And until we talk again, make it a great week. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com.